everyone. Uh, this is part two on our study of the Passover lamb. And we're going to start out by talking about uh, the lamb of the New Testament, which we know is Yasha. And um, I just wanted to read this, Revelation 15, 3. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of Yah, and the song of the lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works. Yah Yil Almighty, just and true are thy ways, thou King of Saints. So we see here that it's talking about um, the Song of the Lamb, and the Passover is part of that Song of the Lamb. How so? Um, the Song of the Lamb is the Law of Moses, and by the Law of Moses, we know that we're supposed to keep the Passover uh, even to this generation. And one of the requirements of Passover is oh, that they had in the Old Testament was they put the blood of the lamb on the doorpost. So we're going to read that in Exodus 12. And I want to ask you a question. How do you put the blood of the lamb on the doorpost today in the New Testament? Um, since we do not have to sacrifice the lamb, uh, the, the sacrifices and oblation ceased at the cross, uh, and this is how people want to tell us that the law of Moses was um, put on, on the cross. But this isn't true. So we need to know why and how we put the blood of the lamb on our doorpost today. So there is, there is some rich um, truth in the blood of the lamb. Because obviously Revelation talks about the lamb. So let's go to Exodus 12. And we'll go to, uh, we reread earlier, uh, and you can read uh, Exodus 12 at the beginning, but we're going to start with verse number 7. And we can do, uh, well, let's go, just go to the beginning. And the Yah spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. So Yah had to tell Moses what time it was. Put them on true time. Um, speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish. A male of the first year, you shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats, and ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the month of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel, which today we know the the name of Israel is Jeshurun, um, that's when it was talked about in the Old Testament, and people have now come to the understanding that it's pronounced Israel, but it was Yasharon. So we are restoring the name of Yasharon now because it's been revealed to us. Now let's go to verse 8. And they shall eat the flesh of the night. Uh, verse 7. Oh, 7. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts on the upper door post of the houses wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night. Roast with fire and unleavened bread and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. So we see that, that they're supposed to put the blood of the lamb on the uh, upper doorpost of the houses. So how do we do this today? Well, many people keep Passover and they say it's just a commemoration. But I will tell you that the blood of the lamb is very important today. How do we avail ourselves of this blood of the lamb? Um, let's look at verse number 13. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. Uh, when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. So we can see that we know that we're going to go, uh, Yah's children, Yah's Sharon, are about to go through a second exodus. We're waiting for that time to, um, to come to pass, but Yah uh, will pass over those who have the blood of the lamb on the doorpost. Okay, let's now go to, um, to verse 21. 
Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. And ye shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. For the Yah will pass through to smite the Egyptians. And when he seeth the blood upon the lintel, and on the two side posts, the Yah will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto you, unto your houses to smite you. This right here is the main reason why we still keep the Passover today. Because we need the blood on the door. And we need to know how we avail ourselves of this blood today in the New Testament era. And... Uh, and ye shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and to thy sons forever. And it shall come to pass when ye be come to the land which the Yah will give you according as he has promised that ye shall keep this service. So they were going to be keeping that service forever and we still keep it today and we have to understand how we keep it today. So let's go ahead and just read about the blood of the lamb in the New Testament because... Um, even though many people are keeping the feast, many people don't know that there's the blood to be put on the doorpost of your heart today. So let's go to Hebrew, 19, uh, Hebrew 10, 19 through 21. Okay. Okay, it says, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Yasha. So see, the blood of Yasha is still applicable in the New Testament era, which we are living in today. By a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. And having an high priest over the house of Yah, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. So here we see that he's the high priest over the house and we need his blood in a new and living way. So let's us, let's go to Hebrew 12:24. And to Yasha the mediator of the new covenant and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. So here we see there's a blood of sprinkling in the New Testament. Um, and sprinkling, I want you to notice that it is in the present tense. It doesn't say the blood that was sprinkled or the blood that dropped in the past. It is a present form sprinkling. So there's a blood of sprinkling that happens Today, in if we go in boldly before the throne, there's a throne in heaven that we know that the true tabernacle not made with hands is continually having services on those whose names are written in the book of the Lamb. So if, you're, if your name is written in the book and you uh, want to have your, uh, your, your name written there with your your sins blotted out, you need to know that there's fresh blood sprinkling those names, blotting out those sins on your record in uh, heaven today. Right, and it says here, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. Well, how are our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience? Through the blood of sprinkling, as it says in 1 Peter 1, 2, uh, that this is Yasha's own blood. Give a minute. Elect according to the foreknowledge of Yah the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Yash Messiah, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. So if we're obedient to the Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, uh, and His uh, divine ordinances of all the feast days, then we are uh, covered through the blood of sprinkling of Yash Messiah. And if you go to Revelation 12 and verse 11 says, they're talking about the dragon here. 
It says, and they overcame him, the dragon, they would be in the saints, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. So that is how you overcome today the enemy of your soul, is through the blood of the Lamb, and he sprinkles his blood afresh in the sanctuary in heaven today, so he is still a Lamb today, as well as a high priest. Now, when did this blood of sprinkling begin? You go to Revelation 13, 8, it says, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, talking about the image of the beast, whose names are not written in the book of, the, of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. So the land that was slain from the foundation of the world was the one slain in the Garden of Eden uh, to save Adam and Eve from the death angel that passed over because Yasha uh, and Yah interceded and killed the first Passover lamb at the Garden of Eden and spared their lives. If you go to Revelation 1.5 says, talking about uh, Yahshua Messiah, and from Yahshua Messiah who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. So the only way we get our sins washed and forgiven today is through his own blood that he sprinkles for us afresh in the sanctuary in heaven today from the wounds in his hands that he received on the cross of Calvary. Those wounds are opened every time we ask for forgiveness and the blood is sprinkled upon the altar for our sins when we confess and forsake them. And then, because it says in Hebrews 9, 12, neither by the blood of goats and calves, not by the animal's blood, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. So the only way we can have eternal redemption is through the blood of Yasha, his own blood. And then in Hebrews 9.22 says, And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. So unless we have shedding and sprinkling of blood by Yasha today, his own blood, we have no remission or forgiveness for our sins. Go ahead. Okay, so also um, he's the mediator of this new covenant, and when we had our service last night, uh, we took the the bread and we drank the juice in uh, commemoration and to make us realize that his blood today is in the New Testament. Right, exactly. Uh, that that it's this a, is what we do now with the Yasha Supper on Passover. For if we just think of it as in the past, that this is what they did in the Passover in the past, and we're just making a commemoration, we're not understanding that he is our high priest today, um, interceding for us on our behalf with his blood. And he tells us at the Passover, he tells his disciples about this uh, New Testament, yeah, so changing over from from that to what we do now in the New Testament. Right, because in Matthew 26, 27 says, And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament. So we have his blood still in the New Testament today because he is a high priest over the house of God in heaven above through the new and living way. We have a high priest who's alive and interceding for us with his own blood. And this is the blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. It was shed for those uh, who are faithful in the Old Testament. And it is shed, Hebrews 9.22, without the shedding of blood is no remission. It is shed uh, for us today, daily, in the sanctuary, in the first apartment, for the remission of our sins today. So this is uh, the plan of salvation in action through the blood of the Lamb. Uh, after he died on the cross of Calvary, he was resurrected on the first day of the week as the way of sheep offering. He became a high priest when he ascended to heaven, and he ever lived to make intercession for us. So we have a living high priest, a living, active, heavenly sanctuary system today through the blood, the blood of the Lamb, the blood of Yahshua. So if he's our high priest today and he ever liveth to make intercession for you, then as Hebrews 13, 20 says, Now the Yah of peace that brought again from the dead our uh, Messiah, Yasha, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Mm -hmm. So yes, he died for uh, the people at that time, for many, it says. He, he, he died for many. He died for those that lived under the first testament. And so in our, in our time, the reason why this is so important, and I want you to catch this, that you see the Catholic Church 
saying that they believe in Jesus. And they continually walk with that. The, the Pope always has the crucifix with Jesus still on the cross. Now, why does he do that? Because they, they actually, they worship Lucifer. And Lucifer, Satan, his story, he tells them is that he killed Jesus. Okay, look how strong he is. He, he overcame it. He killed him. He put him on the cross and he died. Okay, they are not holding that cross up because they uh, believe in the lamb for their, for their sins. They are holding that up as a reminder that they killed him. Okay, so we need to know that he ever liveth. He was raised. He ever lives. He's the everlasting covenant with his blood. And that's why it's important to keep the commemoration, yes, of Passover, but to understand that you need this blood over your um, doorpost. You need to know how to avail yourself of the blood. And one of the times that we have that is Passover, but we keep all the feasts knowing that the feast days are the true worship days that we are to keep to avail ourselves of the blood throughout the year. And so Passover is just one of these times and we need to understand that um, the Catholic Church and Satan who leads them really wants to keep everybody closed minded and closed off to the blood that um, saves us today, that the blood that we're putting on this doorpost today, that we are symbolically putting this blood from the everlasting covenant. He's our, um, he's our lamb today. The revelation says so. And so we need to know how it works today in, in, in the tabernacle. It's been closed to you because this truth has been coming forth and it was to be uncovered. But the Jesuits in every single infiltrated church want you to think that it was all in the past. So all people, the cross. so people do not understand how to avail themselves and overcome sin because this blood has power it it keeps you from sinning it's helping you overcome it's helping you to um get the strength it's a transfusion um and i'll go into the story really quickly my father went to the hospital and because he passed out and it's twice that he did and what they did to him even though i really don't like that they gave him the blood they gave him transfusions, okay? And they did that to give him power and strength and um, revived um, because he was losing blood. And so today, we are so weak and so uh, uh, low in our spirituality because we do not understand the power in the blood. This is why these songs were written. Power, power, power in the blood and um what's that other song we sang last night nothing but the blood nothing of but the blood of yasha so this blood in the new testament on the passover is extremely important please study please read these verses that we've given to you go to our website we have several studies about what's happening in the sanctuary um and we have a study on the blood of the lamb right. the blood of yasha right and so like i said this blood was uh, shed from the foundation of the world in the Garden of Eden, and it brings us all the way up to uh, the new and living way, a high priest in heaven above. And so we're going to go into the, uh, the Passover ordinance and the law that was written there. The Bible says, prove all things, hold pass that which is good. And uh, <coughs> the... Um, Isaiah 20 says, To the law and to the testimony, they speak not according to this word, is because there is no light in them. We read earlier in uh, Exodus that when Moses was telling Israel to get ready to um, slay the Passover lamb, that Yah told him, he says, This much of the be, be the beginning of the month to you, the beginning of the year, will be the first month of the year to you. So you always have this, um, this ordinance of the Yasha's Supper and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, in the first month of the year, well, that's not January, that's the Gregorian time. This first month of the year uh, coincides with uh, the last of March and the first of April. So today is April the 3rd, uh, 2019, and that's why we are keeping uh, the Feast of Unleavened Bread as a holy day today. Because it tells us this in Leviticus 23, verse 4. These are the feasts of the Yah, even holy convocations, which you shall proclaim in their seasons. 
the seasons are mandated by the moon, the movements of the moon. Every uh, uh, three moons or three months is a season. And now we're in the first season of the year, which is spring. And if you, if you look out uh, tonight when the sun sets, you'll see the full moon arising in the east, showing that we're in the middle of the month, according to Yah's calendar. Uh, verse 5, in the 14th day of the first month at even is, uh, is the Yah's Passover. So that was yesterday, the 14th day was uh, Thursday, and when the sun set, it became uh, Friday evening, it was the 15th day, which it is today, the, the day in biblical time begins at sundown and ends at sundown. So that is how you calculate the days according to Yah's true calendar, not according to man's uh, Gregorian calendar, which sets all the days and the times and seasons all wrong. They're wrong with everything. Verse 6, And on the fifteenth day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto the Yah. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. And the first day you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. You shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Yah seven days. And the seventh day is a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. So, this is what <clears throat> Moses commanded the children of Israel was to keep the Feast of Passover, Feast of Unleavened Bread on the beginning of going down the sun on the 14th day and then when the 15th day came on it was time to keep the Passover, Feast of Unleavened Bread which today we have the Yasha Supper. So why do we keep the Yasha Supper today instead of slaying the Passover lamb? Let's go to the book Desire of Ages, page 652. It says, Messiah was standing at the point of transition between two economies and their two great festivals. So that one festival in the Old Covenant was the Passover, slaying the Passover lamb. That great festival in the New Covenant is the Yasha Supper. He, the spotless lamb of Yah, was about to present himself as a sin offering. <clears throat> that he would thus bring to an end the system of types and ceremonies that for 4,000 years had pointed to his death. So if this system of type and ceremonies had been going on for 4,000 years, we know that it began all the way back at the Garden of Eden. <clears throat> so as he ate the Passover with his disciples, he instituted in its place the service that was to be the memorial of his great sacrifice. So he's going to replace the Passover with the memorial of his great sacrifice. The national festival of the Jews was to pass away forever, the service which Messiah established was to be observed by his followers in all lands and through all ages. Why is that? Because it is a statute forever uh, <clears throat> for all your generations. Uh, throughout the generations of Israel, this is the statute forever. Uh, read that. Let me read it out of the law, Leviticus 23:14. And you shall eat neither bread nor parched corn or green ears until the selfsame day that you have brought an offering unto your Yah, it shall be a statue forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. That's the law and it goes way beyond the cross, even all the way into eternity. Okay, the Passover was ordained as a commemoration of the deliverance of Israel from Egyptian bondage. Yah had directed that year by year as the children should ask the meaning of the ordinance, the history should be repeated. Thus, the wonderful deliverance was to be kept fresh in the minds of all. The ordinance of the Yasha Supper was given to commemorate the great deliverance wrought out as a result of the death of Messiah. Till he shall come the second time in power and glory, this ordinance is to be celebrated. So until he comes again and to set up his everlasting kingdom, then we're to keep and celebrate the Yasha Supper, remember his death, and look forward to his coming. This is a, not only looking into the past, but into the future. Because when he comes, it's going to be at the feast days, at the Passover. And uh, we know that he was also born during the Feast of Tabernacles. So he entered this world during the feast, and he was sacrificed on the feast. And then he left it ten days before the Feast of Pentecost. So he's, his whole life and mission was surrounded by these holy feast days that Israel celebrated. It is the means by which his great work for us to be, is to be kept fresh in our minds. So we keep this fresh in our minds by doing it according to the law, which is once a year. And if we go now to the book of Patriarchs and Prophets, 
Ellen G. White, it's page 539, says, On the fourteenth day of the month at even, the Passover was celebrated, because on the fourteenth day is when they killed the Passover. They didn't eat it until the sun set at the end of the fourteenth day and the beginning of the fifteenth day. But they had prepared and make ready on the fourteenth day of the Passover, so that when uh, even was come, they could sit down and eat the Passover supper. <clears throat> so on the fourteenth day of the month at even, the Passover celebrated. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's solemn, impressive ceremonies commemorating the deliverance from bondage in Egypt and pointing forward to the sacrifice that should uh, deliver from the bondage of sin. <clears throat> so, if it delivered them from sin back then, it's also uh, set up for us today to deliver us from our sins today. If you keep this ordinance uh, according to His way, His word, His will, then you will be delivered from your sins as well. You will receive remission. So, when the Savior yielded up his life on Calvary, <coughs> excuse me, good. the significance of the Passover ceased. So, when he died on the cross, the Passover ceased. Because the veil of the temple was written twain, bringing to an end the earthly sanctuary system and its animal sacrifices. And the ordinance of the Yasha Supper was instituted as a memorial of the same event of which the Passover had been a type. So, if Yahshua's Supper was instituted when the Passover ceased, and there was more of the same event, then you keep the Yahshua's Supper at the same time that they kept the Passover in the Old Testament. The Passover was followed by the seven days feast of unleavened bread. The first and seventh days were days of holy convocation, when no servile work was to be performed. Today is one of those holy convocations. It's the 15th day of the first month, and so we're keeping this feast today. On the second day of the feast, well, this could be on, uh, let's talk about the first fruits. On the second day of the feast, the first fruits of the year's harvest were presented before Yah. Barley was the earliest grain in Palestine, and at the opening of the feast, it was beginning to ripen. Uh, a sheaf of this grain was weighed by the priest before the altar of Yah as acknowledgement that all was his. Not until the ceremony had been performed was the harvest to be gathered. So. So this very um, statement that you read is used by people to say that we no longer keep the Passover, which is true in a way. We no longer keep that sacrifice of getting the one-year-old lamb and doing it that way because he replaced it with the Yasha Supper. And so that's what they don't understand, that yes, we no longer do that, we don't kill an actual uh, lamb. We are now in this New Testament that we talked about before, but this very quote is used uh, for not keeping any feasts whatsoever. Well, that's not true because one ended and another was instituted to take its place. That's what she says. It's clearly pointed out when the Passover ceased, the Yasha Supper was instituted to take the place of which the Passover had been, as a memorial of the same event, of which the Passover had been a type. So we're in the anti-type in the New Testament, so we keep the Yasha Supper today, and we still keep the feast days according to the law. Uh, now let's go to Great Controversy, page 399, and it says, The slaying of the Passover lamb was a shadow of the death of Messiah. Paul says, Messiah, our Passover, is sacrificed for us, 1 Corinthians 5, 7. He also says, let us therefore keep the feast. So Paul was given uh, New Testament believers command to keep the feast of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which had been the Passover in the Old Testament. And of course, he knew about the Yasha Supper. He wrote about it, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, to not do it unworthily. So we do, as often as we do this, we do show his death till he come. And as often as you do it, it's only once a year. So, even in the New Testament, the Apostolic Church, the disciples, Paul and all the rest, they kept the Feast of Unleavened Bread. It's there, it's clear, it's on the record. The sheaf of first fruits, which at the time of the Passover was way before the Yah, was typical of the resurrection of Messiah. We have the wave sheaf coming up in a couple of days. Paul says in speaking of the resurrection of uh, the Yasha and of all his people, Messiah the first fruits, afterward they that are Messiahs at his coming. 1 Corinthians 15, 23. Like the wave sheet, which was the first ripe grain gathered before the harvest, Messiah is the first fruits of that immortal harvest 
of redeemed ones that at the future resurrection shall be gathered into the garner of Yah. So if you don't celebrate his resurrection on the wave sheaf offering on time on the Feast of Unleavened Bread, then uh, <clears throat> you're not going to be part of that future immortal harvest, both of living saints and of the dead. If you don't keep this ordinance today, you won't be, uh, you won't be saved, period. These types were fulfilled not only as to the event, but as to the time. On the 14th day of the first Jewish month, the very day and month on which for 15 long centuries the Passover lamb had been slain. Messiah, having eaten the Passover with his disciples, instituted that feast which was to commemorate his own death as the Lamb of Yah, which taketh away the sin of the world. Uh, in the Tsar of Ages, he said it had been done for 4,000 years. Here, she says it had been done for 15 long centuries. Well, you calculate that backwards and it takes you all the way back to their deliverance out of Egypt in Exodus 12. They, uh, that's when the Passover lamb was slain then and the blood was put upon the doorpost so that the death angel would pass over. And so that commemorated their deliverance from Egyptian bondage and they celebrated this feast for uh, 1,500 years, 15 long centuries. So you have a 4,000 year period and a 1,500 year period. One began at the Garden of Eden, the other uh, just before they got to Mount Sinai. So, <clears throat> but here uh, the institution of the Yasha Supper was to take the place of the Passover. It says, that same night he was taken by wicked hands to be crucified and slain. And as the antitype of the wave sheep, our Yasha was raised from the dead on the third day the first fruits of them that slept, a sample of all the resurrected just, whose vile bodies shall be changed and fashioned like unto his glorious body. It's in 1 Corinthians 15, 20. It says, In like manner, the types which relate to the second advent must be fulfilled at the time pointed out in the sanctuary service. So if you don't keep the feast today, you don't keep the Passover or the Feast of Unleavened Bread, you will not be ready for the second advent. If you're a Seventh-day Adventist and you're not keeping these feasts, uh, you will miss the second advent, I guarantee you. All right, now there's some questions that people have about when to start the Passover on the 14th day or the 15th day. Now, I wanna read a couple of scriptures here. It says, uh, six days thou shalt eat unleavened bread. So, and on the seventh day shall be a solemn assembly to the Yad Yield, thou shalt do no work therein, Deuteronomy 16.8. So, here we see that the uh, last day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread is a solemn assembly. Now, in Joel 2, it talks about calling a solemn assembly. And so, he's referring here to the law in Leviticus 23 about the solemn assembly. And uh, that is...